Hi Math Crew! This tutorial video is intended to be about direct variation. So th these are some pages from one of the versions of our course pack for Math 116, um, but we're going to focus on direct variation today. We're going to focus on the situation where two quantities are related, so just two quantities, and I do want to also include in here that the quantities will both be positive for us in this class. When an increase in the independent variable causes an increase in the dependent variable, the relationship is directly proportional or varies directly. That's what we're going to focus on today. And by the end of this video, the plan would be that you can take a situation where you know you have direct variation and write the complete equation of variation and then also use that equation to make some predictions. In other words, for direct variation, if the quantities vary directly, as one quantity increases, so does the other. Some examples out in the world where direct variation is present. Um, if you are an hourly employee, the number of hours worked As the number of hours worked increases, so does your take-home pay. So that would be one example of direct variation. In a chemistry situation, if you consider uh, temperature and volume of a gas, if you increase the temperature, the volume will also increase. And there are other applications out in the world as well, where as one quantity increases, so does the other. And the reverse would be true as well. If one quantity decreases, so does the other. They may not decrease or increase at the same rate, but they both move in the same direction if we have direct variation. So to start working with this, direct variation models have this kind of look to them. The variable y varies directly with x means exactly the same thing as that y equals some constant k times x. And I'm going to put, um, you know, like a little bubble around that x. It doesn't have to be plain x. It could be some variation of x, like x to the 2 thirds power. But in any case, if x is 0, in this equation or in this equation where we have an adjustment on the x, if x is 0, so is y. So the point 0, 0 is a part of a direct variation relationship. So that's direct variation. To use this, let's go grab an example. Let's say that someone tells you that x varies directly as the square root of y. We have to be really careful readers with these. The general equation of variation for this relationship will be formed by reading the statement just like you would in English from left to right. The first variable we come across is x varies directly is kind of like equals, but it has a little fudge factor to it, this k, this constant of variation, and that k gets multiplied by the second quantity. And the second quantity is the square root of y. And so that's our general equation of variation. Then they give us some more information. They tell us that when x equals 45, y equals 9. And they want us to find this constant of proportionality or the constant of variation. They want us to find k. Well, if you have an x-y pair and an equation that relates x and y, you'll plug in your x-y pair. So x gets replaced with 45. k is just k for right now. 
y gets replaced with 9. We get a statement, 45 equals k times the square root of 9. And then we start to work on this. The square root of 9 is 3. 45 equals k times 3. To solve for k, we will divide both sides of the equation by 3. And we find out that our k value is 15. So the constant of proportionality is this k value, 15. Then they want the specific equation of variation to describe the relationship. That means we'll plug the k back into the general equation. x equals 15 times the square root of y. And then use the model and algebra to predict, when, to predict y when x equals 8. Take this very specific equation, let x equal 8, and solve for y. 8 equals 15 times the square root of y. Divide both sides of your equation by 15. 8 fifteenths equals the square root of y. Go ahead and leave that in fraction form. To get y all by itself, we will square both sides of the equation. And when we do that, let's see, 8 squared is 64, 15 squared is 225. So we have a projection that when x equals 8, y should be 64 225 As a concept check, we back things up and we look to see if things went in the correct direction. This problem required direct variation. It was given to us in the problem. And th this means that as x increases, y must also increase. In our case, x decreased. It started at 45. And in the new scenario, the x was 8. So to fill in this statement, it probably makes better sense to say, this means that as x decreases, y must also decrease. At the start of the problem, x was 45, and the partner, y, was 9. In the new scenario, x was 8, and you found out that y was 64 225 In this problem, did the model result in the required type of variation? Well, the x's decreased, and so did the y's. So yes. And the reasoning, as x decreased, so did y. And that's not a perfect double check, it's just that we have the required type of variation that was given in the problem. You could have made a mistake in here someplace, and we wouldn't be able to find it just with this statement, but we know that we went in the right direction. So that's kind of a plain example of variation. As an application problem for variation, the distance that an object falls varies directly as the square of the time the object is in motion. An object that falls for 3 seconds will fall 144.9 feet. This is kind of a physics example. They didn't give us any variables, but let's go put some in. Let's use d for distance. And then let's use t for time, and we will be very careful. It's the square of the time. That means t to the 2, or t squared. They want a complete equation of variation for this situation right away. So we have to do a few uh, steps, a little bit of work first. We can go in the order of the English statement. d equals k. For direct variation, it will be times t squared. So there's our generic model. Let's fill in the fact pair that we know. An object that falls for 3 seconds, that's the t value. 144.9 feet is the d value. Well, 
144.9 equals k times 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. 144.9 equals k times 9. Divide both sides by 9 to get that k isolated. And when I do that, I get 16.1 for k. And that's without any rounding. That was exactly 16.1. The complete equation of variation is not k equals 16.1. It's this starter equation, this generic one, with the k value filled in. One more step here. d equals 16.1 times t squared. That's your complete equation. Then use the model in algebra to predict how far the object falls in 2.5 seconds. 2.5 is a t value. We will take that t value and plug it into our very specific equation to find the distance. d equals 16.1 times 2.5 squared. I get 100.625 for a calculated value for this portion of the problem. And we're looking for how far the object falls in two and a half seconds. This would be 100.625 feet. They told us in the beginning of the problem that we are measuring in feet. As a quick check, at three seconds, the object fell 144.9 feet. Ultimately, we were asking about two and a half seconds, so the time decreased. That means because of direct variation, the distance should also decrease. We were at 144.9 feet, and with two and a half seconds, we're at 100.625 feet, so we went in the correct direction.